Today we're going to run through uh, Tiger Touch, it's our touchscreen software. We're going to run through uh, several different ways to run cut lists. Uh, we're going to run through a push feed cut list, set point cut list. We're going to run them as optimized and we're going to show you how to run a pack list as well. Um, so to jump right into it, uh, we're going to go ahead and load up three separate cut lists. These cut lists are all a little different so they'll look a little different and I'll show how. So to load a cut list in our cut list screen, we simply uh, press load. It offers up the options that we have available. And we're gonna pick the first one. It loads up here. We're gonna load up three cut lists. Okay, so with our three cut lists showing on the screen, I'm gonna move the one that I want to run all the way over to the left of the screen uh, by hitting that swap button. Uh, now I'm gonna check it, make sure it's what I want. I wanna run it as a push feed list. I want it to be optimized and I'm not running a packed list, okay? So to start that list, um, or to open it all the way up there, we'll see that we're just showing the length, the quantity, and how many we have remaining. To start the list, I'm gonna press start up in the top left corner. I'm gonna enter in my stock length, which is gonna be 70 inches. Hit enter. I'm gonna load up a, a piece of stock here and press start. You'll see that it optimizes out my parts down below and shows my waist and my head and tail cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the list by making my head cut. Moves into my first cut piece. Second cut piece. My third cut piece. And now my tail cut. Now it goes back out and asks me for my next stock length. Our next position is 70, so we're going to go ahead and load our material up. Again, we're going to press start. It's going to move into the head cut, and we'll just run right through here. As we're cutting, the remaining is counting, uh, counting down until we have zero remaining parts left. And the cut list is now complete, and it states complete on the screen for when you're done uh, so that we can move on to the next, the next cut list. To go back to the cut list that we already had available, um, you simply press the, the arrow, um, and then we can either swap over to the next one or clear out the cut list that we already finished. Okay, so we're gonna do that same cut list, but this time we're gonna do it as a set point optimized list. So we're gonna go ahead and load our list, and we're gonna run that same one. So we come up and it's the same list. I'm gonna go ahead and swap it again and move it over to the, the left, and then I'm gonna open it up to where it takes up the whole screen. Now, this was a, a list that took a little while to run, and now I wanna edit the list. So what I'm gonna do is you can actually pick on any cell that's on the screen and you can edit it. So instead of cutting two parts, I wanna cut one and it changes it to one. Now additionally, I can pick a different cell and say minus line. And what that does is pulls that part out. I can also add in a line and that'll add in a part that we can then edit however we want uh, for the cut list. So we pick that cell, we hit minus, and it pulls that out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and edit this down to where we don't have as many parts to run on this list. Now we only have the three parts. We're gonna take a look at our list here again. We're gonna change it, uh, make sure it's a set point. Again, it's optimized. We're good with that. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So we press start. We give in our stock length again. Now in a set point list, it's gonna move forward to that set point position. Assuming you already have made your head cut, and so any cuts that we make will be parts at this point, but it shows your full board optimized on the screen. So as we're cutting parts, it's pulling the parts off of the list to where we got a zero here now, and it darkens where the part was.
And that list is complete. So the next list that we're going to run is going to be a pack list or a bundle list. So we're going to run this larger list over here. And as you can see, uh, there's quite a lot of parts in here. A lot of times what people will do is run bundles, say run packs of 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this and we've got it set up as a push feed optimized with pack panel. So what happens is when we start this list, it asks us for the amount. The amount is how many sticks or how many stock pieces are we running together. Now we're going to go ahead and say we're running 10 pieces at the same time and then it asks for our stock length. We're going to go with 70 because that's what we can fit on this table. It's going to run out. We're going to press start, the same as the other list. And again, it's going to show our optimized list and our optimized parts here. What we'll notice is when we're running through our list, it'll light up what part we are on. And watch what happens when I make my cut. 10 pieces less on that part for every time I make a cut because we are cutting 10 pieces and pulling 10 parts from that. So we're going to go from the cutlass menu to our hotkeys menu or to our move menu. What this allows us to do is uh, use hotkeys to move to a position. So if you have a number of parts that are all similar, uh, you can fill these five pages with your parts um, and your offsets and use them as hotkeys. So what we'll do here is we'll show that you've got a value here and you've got a value here. Um, we also have offsets that will show up here. This shows your value with your offset. This shows your actual position. So if I press 20 and I have an offset of plus 5, my actual position is 25. But I'm showing 20 because that's what we want it to show with our offset of plus 5 up there. Um, so we can change that. And now we're still showing 20, but we're actually moving into 22.75 because we changed our offset. To clear your offset, you simply hit clear, and then you can move into whatever position it is that you need. Um, to change your offset, you can simply go to a different offset and cycle through them. Uh, it will not clear the offset, however, until you hit clear, and it will always use that while it's there. To edit, um, you simply press and release on the button that you're wanting to edit. Uh, you can change it to a forward offset, a negative offset. Uh, we can change the colors uh, as well as the name of the either offset or absolute position and the value as well. Uh, once, you, once you change your value, uh, so we're going to change this to uh, 24 and we're going to keep that as an absolute position and press OK. Then now it changes on the screen as well. 